Right, so I'm on my way in and ha ha, you thought I would be coming through the door because that's what I usually do, but I didn't because I was standing behind the camera all along. And that's fun, I guess. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. Yeah, it's getting pretty hot in here now because it's turning into summer. So I'm gonna have to take this off. That feels much better. So in this episode, we're gonna have a look at this. Right here, I have a light pad block from Rolly. And over here, I've got a uh, Korg Nano Key Studio. And they both are Bluetooth uh, connected devices. Both of them can of course connect through USB cables, but you know, Bluetooth media is pretty nice because you don't need any cables when you're using them. And then you come to problems like this, like Propeller Heads Thor here. Propeller Heads Thor is an older kind of app. One of my most favorites, but it doesn't have a Bluetooth MIDI connection menu. So how do you connect it? Because And the way you set it up is, well, stick with me and I'll show you exactly how. This is Propeller Heads Thor. It's one of my absolute favorites when it comes to iOS synthesizers. So in app years, it, it's really old. And so it only loads as an inter-app audio kind of device. It doesn't have any support for audio unit extension mode. No, it's an old school type of synthesizer, which also means it doesn't have any support for Bluetooth MIDI but it kind of does. And in order to get access to the Bluetooth media devices, you want to connect with apps like this one, older apps. Well, you kind of have to activate the connection from your Bluetooth media device to your iPad or your iPhone through another app that does support Bluetooth media connections. Now I'm gonna show you two ways of doing this. Now, before we move on, we need to activate the Bluetooth on our iPad here. So I'm gonna swipe down in from this corner because I'm using iOS 12 and I'm gonna activate the Bluetooth. Now that this is on, we need to activate one of our USB MIDI devices here. Now the Korg NanoKey Studio is lightweight, portable, battery driven, which this one can be. It uses uh, two AAA batteries. It has a micro USB connector. And the reason to why there's a cable here right now is because I'm gonna power it with an iPhone charger because I didn't have any batteries at home. <coughs> Right, so the Nano Key Studio from Korg also has a wireless mode where it sends out Bluetooth MIDI, you know, stuff. And in order to activate that, because we're gonna use this one first for our first uh, little thing. Well, to activate it, you press and hold down the scene button and then you go to the wireless pad. You press that and this one should be lighting up and the other one should still be blinking. So now it's sending out Bluetooth. But if we go into Propeller Heads Thor and go into sources, we can't find the connection. So. We're gonna have to activate this in another app. I'm gonna be using Audiobus 3. All right, so I know a lot of people wanna ask the question, do you have to use Audiobus? No, you don't have to use Audiobus, but this is one way of doing it. I like doing it because if you do it the other way, you have to, well, just stick with me and we'll get there. Audiobus 3 actually has a MIDI connections panel. And so we switch to it down here in the lower left corner and there we are. Now, all we need to do from this point on is to open up an input, go to the Bluetooth connections, and here we can find the NanoKey Studio. Now, we just have to press this and there it is connected. Now, the Bluetooth pipeline should be activated from the Korg NanoKey Studio into our iPad and should also show up as a connection in other apps. So, we're gonna switch over to Propellerheads Thor open up the cogwheel menu and there we have it nano key studio bluetooth now a warning here with these older synths sometimes when you go in and you do this the synthesizer or the app whether it's a drum machine or whatever it might be might actually lock up and crash so we'll see if this works but usually when i do this the first time i press here and tap and nothing happens and i actually have to restart the app so this one worked. We should now have Bluetooth MIDI.
Very sweet, we now have this MIDI controller connected through Bluetooth, even though Thor doesn't directly support Bluetooth MIDI inside the settings. Now I was using Audiobus, but as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to use Audiobus. So let's do this from the beginning. But this time we're gonna let the uh, Rolly Blocks light pad take the stage. So for this, I'm just gonna leave this as it is. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna double tap and swipe everything off screen. So we're starting out from a clean slate. Now the second way to do this is to actually activate the Bluetooth connection through another app that does support Bluetooth media, just like I did with Audiobus, only we're gonna use a synthesizer. The only thing with this connection is that if you don't want that synth to make any sounds while you're playing the other synth you actually do wanna to connect to, well, you're gonna have to turn down the volume for that synth that actually activates the Bluetooth, I'll show you. So I'm gonna open up another one of my favorites. This one is made by a guy uh, called, bleh. this one is made by a guy called Rolf and I actually got to meet him. I had the privilege of meeting the guy who made Nave. You know, we were talking for an hour or more and I forgot to actually tape the whole thing. So all I have are these photos. So I'm gonna have to call him up and get him on an interview because you have to hear this guy out. So inside Waldorf Nave, if we go to tape and sys, which stands for system, we can find a MIDI menu right here. So here we have something called dev for device. And if we tap that, we get this menu right here. And here we can see that we have the Nano Key Studio Bluetooth on already, but we want to activate the Rolly Blocks light pad. It's a very neat little device and I'm finding this extremely useful for what I do actually. It's got a lithium battery so it's very portable. So I'm gonna turn it on by holding this one and it starts sending out a pulse. Now it might not show up here because we actually have to go to Bluetooth LE and activate this one. And there it is activated. We press done and okay. As I mentioned, if you don't want this synth that you're actually activating the Bluetooth MIDI connection with to, to, to make any sounds, you have to turn down the volume. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn down this one and we shouldn't have any sound now. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up Propellerhead Thor and while it's opening up, I'm just gonna make sounds, audible sounds with my mouth. And now that it's opened up, we're gonna go to the settings menu and go into source. And here we can see the light pad block hack Bluetooth. We're gonna activate this one. Very nice. So we now have that connection, but you know what's even more awesome about this? You could layer sounds like this. So if I activate audio bus and I actually go here and I um, choose the uh, propellers Thor as an interrupt audio device like that. And then I go here and I search for a Waldorf Nave uh, right there. Then I can actually pipe them out into an app that will record this sound. And now we should have a dual sound mode being recorded. Very awesome. So if we close all of this down, then there is one more thing I wanna show you. Let's open up Sunriser Synth here and we go into Utilities and we go into MIDI Inputs. You can see that both of these devices still exist here as Bluetooth because even though we turned off the stuff, it still lingers on. So we still have them connected. Only with this one, if we go back like this, we can no longer hear it and that's because background audio mode is not on. Now, background audio mode in Sunriser Synth, which also is a favorite of mine, 
Well, it's right here, but most of other synthesizers have this background audio mode in the utilities menu or a cogwheel menu, or you actually have to go to the settings app to set them up. And you go here and you go down there and you should be able to find the synthesizers and activate them like that. With this one, you turn it on like this and now background audio mode is on and you should be able to And there you go. That's how you connect your Bluetooth media devices to synthesizers that don't support it directly. Thank you so much for watching. And if you felt that this video was helpful in some way, if you learned something new, then why not press that thumbs up? Thumbs up is good because likes are good on YouTube. Now, of course, you'll find links to Propeller Store on the App Store, including Nave and also Sunriser Synth. And they're always down in the description together with all of the links to all the social networks where I'm at. And you know what? I do prefer when you link up with me on Instagram. Why? Because it's such a nice platform and I do like the way that uh, a lot of my viewers, including a lot of developers that I follow and other people within the um, industry, you know, music industry, uh, how they share their little jams and stuff from their rooms, living rooms or garages and stuff like that. And that's what I like doing too. So I'm gonna be doing more than that. I'm gonna be doing more than that. I'm gonna be doing more of that. Yeah, follow me on Instagram. If you want to support me in any other, well, if you want to support me in any other way, you do have this uh, uh, thing over here. So you have uh, Patreon, uh, PayPal, and you know all of the other stuff. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Now, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now, go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Ho 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 ho. ho.